In the Keva of chapter 614, we saw that Makino became mother of a child. In one of the SBS, on the question of who's the father of the baby, Oda answered that person. Could that person refer to Shanks? In chapter 802, we got to know about a new entry in the Seven Warlords, that is the self-proclaimed son of Whitebeard Edward Weevil. We also saw his mother with him, which seems to have instilled in her son the idea of Weevil being Whitebeard's son. The fact that Whitebeard really had, or hadn't, a son which he didn't even know about is not so unlikely, but I doubt it would be in any case Weevil. His body being covered with scars, his stupid and childish attitude, make him look almost like a brainless zombie. Does it have anything to do with Moria which we know is alive in the new world? In chapter 821, when Jack starts attacking Zunisha in order to make the giant elephant kneel down. Zunisha, asks for help to Luffy and Momonisk and, on order of the letter, wipes out the entire fleet of Jack in one hit. We don't know if Momonisk's talent only works with Zunisha or also for other King of Beasts, in this case, it would remind a lot the power of another ancient weapon, Shi Arahashi which is able to give orders to huge sea creatures. If that were the case, Momonus could also turn out to be an ancient weapon, otherwise the only reason would be that Zunisha is somehow loyal to the Kazuki family, for some reason which we don't know yet. In the cover of chapter 631, we saw Crocus, Roger's former crew member, together with Lovun and a mysterious character. In the panel, Crocus seems happy for the visit. Perhaps because they once were part of the same crew? With the release of the data book One Piece Green, and with the revelation of the name of the third strongest man of Roger's crew, Scoopigabon, many have linked him with the mysterious character. But in the colored manga version, the character is blonde, while Scooper has dark hair. So, who is the man? The hat seems to be characteristic of the Wano country, perhaps he'll appear in Wano? According to Dolph Lamingo, in chapter 761, there exists a national treasure somewhere in Mari Ijoa, that only the world nobles know of, and if its existence was revealed to the public, it would throw the world into chaos. With this knowledge, Do Flamingo was able to blackmail them into doing anything he said if he needed them to, even the mobilization of CP0. Also, he believes that if this treasure was combined with the OPOP no me, it could allow one to effectively conquer the world. Maybe given the location of Mari Ijoa, and knowing that Fishman Island is 10,000 meters below under the red line, it's possible that inside the Mari Ijoa's palace we have the top of a tree, Sunlight Eve, and we could assume that probably Eve once was able to make fruits. Perhaps the devil fruits? Standing by Luchi's words, any greedy fool who tries to eat two devil fruits, would result in his body exploding. Leaving no trace behind. Therefore, how could Blackbeard absorb other devil fruit powers other than the yummy yummy nomi? Why didn't he explode? A first clue was given by the first division commander of the Whitebeard pirates, Marco the Phoenix said in chapter 577 that Blackbeard's body is atypical, and that apparently all of Whitebeard's people, or at least the higher-ups, know that he's a little different. In chapter 440, 
Ace on the Bonaro Island said referring to Blackbeard. You've lived twice as I have, there is no way you don't understand the situation, the words of of Ace is wrong even in the first English manga version. As interpreted in a more linear way and likely assume no hidden meanings. The correct translation is therefore, you, who live a double life. One Piece Green instead defines it as it clues the teacher's secret, and R states the only way so far to figure out Blackbeard's mystery, is to think about Ace's words regarding Blackbeard's age. What is the precise meaning of double life, and where its power comes for now remains a mystery, but maybe Blackbeard can absorb two powers because he absorbed the life of Thatch, thus having a double life and not being just older? During the events of Dressrosa arc, Jesus Burgess discussed Cusin with his captain Blackbeard. Burgess said that he cannot be trusted, but Blackbeard noted that the same could be said of their crewmate, Shirley. This indicated that Okiji had been in contact with the Blackbeard pirates. The five elders later confirmed that Cusin indeed allied himself with the Blackbeard pirates that day. In Punk Hazard. He told Smoker to warn Akahinu about the danger Doflamingo posed to the new Marine headquarters, showing a degree of concern for the well-being of the Marines, despite disagreeing with Akahinu's ideals. Therefore it seems that his main goal is to destabilize the government and the Marine that doesn't reflect its ideals of justice, and perhaps, he wouldn't care allying with pirates just to achieve his goal. Is he part of the Revolutionary Army or is he acting alone? In Chapter 424 in 2006, Oda answered to a question about Luffy's parents. He replied implying that they would appear in the next volumes. This happened in 2006. Perhaps they were already drawn and we didn't notice them? From an interview with Oda in the American Shonen Jump in December 2009, Oda has also mentioned that he figured Luffy's mom would be a very strict woman if she ever appeared. I think she's alive. I'm still thinking hard about this. But if she does appear in the story, then she'll be a very tough looking woman. And strict. There's no way she's a beautiful mother. She's got this typical middle-aged woman's permed hair. As the interview suggests, it seems that even Oda himself isn't so sure about Luffy's mother destiny, but he's up to what she may look like in the case she was still alive and decides to make her appear in the story. Perhaps she has something to do with Dragon leaving the Marines and becoming a revolutionary? Eight hundred years ago, after the defeat of the Great Kingdom, the world government was born and took political control of the entire world. For the world government, the events of the void century were better left unknown as information linked to it is considered far too dangerous, and under the pretext of the ancient weapons, the world government has forbidden the research of the missing years, and the study of Poneglyphs is outlawed. The reality is that the ideals of the fallen kingdom written on some of the stones are far more dangerous than any of the weapons. In chapter 817, we got to know that a clan of stone masons known as the Kazuki family. They invented these indestructible stone blocks, with the purpose of carving important ancient text on them, in order to record history while also preventing it from being destroyed. Probably, the Kazuki family was in good terms with the Great Kingdom, and the latter knowing they would be affording a war soon, requested them to carve what the government didn't want others to know, which is probably the real reason that led to the outbreak of the war. A clue might has left by Rossi Nante, saying that D. Being God's natural enemy. 
there's a good chance the D family were the founders of the ancient kingdom, surely they're opposed to the world government, because they have totally opposing views about how to rule the world. Finally there is renewed talk about Raftel. Since the power hierarchy of the new world was uncovered, I always wondered why none of the emperors managed to reach Raftel. In chapter 818, we got to know that there are four poneglyphs known as rogue poneglyphs, that, when read together, lead to four islands which, if aligned, will lead to Raftel's location. One of these, is located on Zu, one is at an unknown location, and the last two, are each owned by the Yonko Kaido and Charlotte Lin Lin. In one of the recent panels, Raftel is shown the same way Crocus showed us hundreds of chapters before. It's surrounded by sea mist that perhaps makes it unobtainable and invisible without coordinates. This also explains why nobody besides Roger never landed on the island. Roger was waiting for someone who would bear the weight of all those centuries upon his back. That treasure holds every ideal of the great kingdom, and when the one who carries on his shoulders Roger's will, will arrive to Raftel, all mankind will be united by a priceless treasure, knowledge. The only thing able to release anybody from preconceptions, dogmas, obligations and everything that oppresses the mind of every sentient being. All the races will be able to live in peace, in close contact with each other, without fear and prejudice. When that happens, finally all the races will be united, finally the world will be one piece. <laughs>